So you're thinking about moving right here to Houston, Texas, but you're on the fence. And you're on the fence because you're not sure whether or not you should buy a home or if you should rent. And that's a very common question. A lot of people looking to relocate here have multiple different things going on involving their move. And so for some people, buying is the right option and for others, renting is the way to go. But in today's video, I wanted to walk you through some of the questions that we ask clients to really help them decide which is gonna be best for them. I don't think buying is the best decision for everyone. And I also don't think renting is the best decision for everyone. And so I'm gonna walk you through the nuances of exactly how I would guide our clients on whether or not it's a better decision to buy or a better decision to rent. So that ultimately you can ask yourself these questions to see which one's gonna be best for you and your family. So if that interests you, stick around and let's get after it right now. Before we dive in, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, tap that bell for notifications. We would love to update you on everything going on right here in Houston. My name is Kyler Ferris. I'm the broker owner of Ferris Realty, and we get calls, texts, and emails every single day from people just like you trying to figure out if they should buy or rent here in the Houston area. So if that is you, don't be shy. Click on that survey link in the comments below, and a member of our team will reach out to you immediately. We would love to help you make a smooth move right here to Houston, Texas. Now, this is a question that we get a lot. It's probably one of the more common questions. And that question is, should I buy a home or should I go ahead and rent a home? And there's a lot that goes into that. And so I just wanna have a conversation with you, just like I would with one of our clients to help you arrive at the right conclusion. And so one of the more common questions that we get are from people that want to buy a home. Most people that call us, they actually want to purchase. Uh, it's either a goal of theirs or they own a home somewhere else. And they know eventually they want to buy here, but they're just not quite sure if they're ready. They're not quite sure what the process looks like here. Maybe they have another home that they need to sell. And so for that reason, they're on the fence and they're scared. And so typically what I find is when I ask the question, would you be comfortable buying if you really truly knew what you were buying? If you knew the area, if you understood everything, um, you know, would you like to purchase? And, and most of the time the answer is yes. In those cases, we typically find when people come into town for a preliminary trip, typically in as short as a two or three day trip, by us asking the right questions, we're actually able to narrow down exactly where they wanna be and almost to the exact home. And so typically a lot of people are hesitant to buy because they're just worried that they're not gonna know the area well enough. And that's, that's really where we come in. And so we recommend planning a trip and figuring that part out because a lot of times it's gonna save you a ton of headaches if you don't have to move twice, if you don't have to rent for a year, if you don't have to throw that money away and you can put it directly towards a home. And regardless of where interest rates are at, at the time, you can always refinance down the road, but you can go ahead and buy while prices are still where they are at. And so, so that's the number one question that I'm gonna ask is, is your goal to, to buy? And if so, is your, is your main hesitancy because you don't think that you're gonna know the area well enough. We have all these videos, as you can tell, and so we're gonna help you in that process by asking the right questions. Now, another thing that comes up a lot when it comes to wanting to rent versus buy is people think that they need more time in their home search. And for some people, that could be true. If you're looking in a market like the Woodlands, for example, where there's lower inventory, it might take longer for that right home to pop up. And so it might make sense for you, depending on your specific circumstances, whether it's a job change or getting kids in school in time, it might make sense for you to go ahead and get here and rent and wait for the right home to come up. Now, that being said, a lot of people ask us if we help with short-term rentals. Um, the short answer to that is no, we don't. We can point you in the right direction, but for the most part, um, brokers and realtors here in Texas are really only gonna be able to help you with 12 month leases. Occasionally you'll see a six month lease available, but typically you're gonna pay a higher rent for that. So you really are left with two options. You can either defer buying um, entirely, which I would exhaust as a last resort if you're interested in buying. Um, the other option would be to go into some type of short-term rental. So typically you're gonna have the same access to that as we are. You're gonna look on Airbnb, or VRBO, 
And between those two resources, you might be able to find a good month to month option. Ultimately, you're still gonna have to move twice in that scenario. You're gonna have to you know, leave wherever you're coming from, put your stuff in storage, move into a short term rental. But what that's gonna do is it's gonna buy you the time without being committed to a year long lease to actively be on the home search. And these are for the people that, like I said, they know they wanna buy, they'd like to buy sooner rather than later. They're just waiting for the right home to pop up. And so a lot of people, it takes them a while to swallow that pill of whether or not um, they're okay with moving twice, but depending on their search and where they're looking, that might be the reality. Now, a lot of people that want to build, if you wanna build new construction, that's a different scenario. A lot of times it's going to take anywhere from six to 12 months in order to build. So you've got two options. Uh, if you wanna build, you can obviously contract on a home here and then continue living wherever you're coming from until that home closes. Now, if you have a reason for being here, like a job change, or like I said, the kids getting into school, um, you know, during the summer, um, making it a smoother transition for them, then what you might wanna do is you might wanna come here and rent, and you can rent for six months to a year. There are some good apartment options that will allow month to month as well. And so that could be a good option for you. Now, there are also gonna be those people that think that renting is a more cost-effective option than buying. With the current interest rates, there's fear um, that maybe your payments are gonna be higher than you'd like them to be. But I will say, I have seen firsthand that rental rates have gone up in proportion to what it costs to purchase a home. We've got some clients right now because they were on a specific home search, they weren't able to find exactly what they wanted in their time frame, and so they did have to go sign a six month lease. And let me tell you, it was painful. It was a very, very expensive lease to get in for six months. It would have been a better option, a much better option, had they been able to find the home that they were looking for within the right time frame, so that they could go ahead and close and move in. And so don't assume that it's a cheaper or better option to rent. Now, obviously, if you're still saving up for some type of down payment, that's a different conversation. Uh, too often we get clients that call us and they go ahead and they rule out, they rule themselves out from the opportunity to buy a home too early. They haven't had the right conversations. At the end of the day, the only person that should really tell you whether or not you qualify to buy a home should be a lender. It shouldn't be me, it shouldn't be you, especially if you've never done it before. You really need to rely on somebody that does this every single day and qualifies people for loans. Now, I'm not saying just because you do qualify for something, you should buy that thing. I'm just saying, don't rule yourself out too early. A lot of people are like, oh no, I should probably you know, wait another year and save up. Well, do a 15 minute pre-qualification, get with a lender, fill out the app, let them look at your credit, let them look at your debt to income ratio, because at the bare minimum, worst case scenario, they give you advice on how to purchase in the future. But nine times out of 10, people are pleasantly surprised that they actually qualify for the amount for the home purchase that they would like to purchase in. And so all that to say, don't rule it out too early, reach out to us, we'll get you in touch with our preferred lender, and he will get you the answers that you need so that ultimately let the lender make that decision for you. And then you still don't have to buy, but at least you're not nixing it <clears throat> too early. Another downside to renting on the front end is gonna be if you do have kids and you're wanting to get them in a certain school district, uh, it, it's a lot to move kids. We've seen this firsthand with our clients from out of state, they're getting acclimated. It, it can be hard on kids. And so um, the last thing you wanna do is rent in an area and then buy in a different area and make those kids have to move schools again. So if you can avoid that, um, that is ideal from what we've learned from our clients. It's best if you can um, go ahead and just buy a home in that school district that you're wanting, even if it means waiting an extra month, two months, three months, whatever it is, um, waiting to buy in that school district because it is easier on the kids. It does allow them to make a smoother transition, especially when there's so much else involved in a move like this. Now, another factor that you need to consider when moving and deciding whether or not you wanna rent or you wanna buy is whether or not you have property to sell in another state or in another city. And so if you do have another property, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get with a lender and you're gonna to need to decide are you comfortable and able to buy another property without selling? I'm not saying that this is plan A, but you need to have the answer to this question. 
So step one is talk to a lender and figure out if you qualify to own both homes at the same time. The reason for this is because it's going to make you a lot more competitive of a buyer here in this market, especially as we roll into the summertime. It's very difficult to get offers accepted with a type of a contingency, meaning contingent upon the sale of your home wherever you're from. Even if they were to consider a contingency, your home not only needs to already be on the market where you live, but it probably already needs to be under contract as well. And so contingencies aren't the best way to get the best home for you here. And so getting pre-qualified with a lender and finding out whether or not you qualify to own both homes at the same time is absolutely key because you, I, I, I can already tell you, you're going to say, well, I don't want to own two homes at the same time. I, so my question to you is, well, do you want to move twice? Because ultimately you just need to gauge on a case by case basis, how risky is it for you to actually own both at the same time? So simultaneously, while you get pre-qualified with this lender to see if you qualify for both, you need to call a real estate professional in your local market where you're going to be selling. And when I say real estate professional, I mean somebody that's good, that knows what they're talking about. And if they're good and they know what they're talking about, they should be able to tell you two things. They should be able to tell you how quickly they think your home's gonna sell, and they should be able to tell you worst case scenario, how much money you're gonna net from the sale of that home. So those two things, how quickly is it gonna sell? Like what's your average days on market? And then if you price it competitively, at, at the low end, what are you gonna walk away with? And with those two pieces of information, you can make a very, very informed, low risk decision that ultimately could be a lot smoother than you having to try to get homes with contingent offers here or possibly even sell that home and then have to go into some type of short-term rental or temporary housing. And so by doing those two things, by talking with a local professional and getting that information and then talking with the lender here, then you really are gonna be in the best position to make that informed decision for yourself. And if you decide, hey, it's too risky for me. I don't want to own two homes at the same time. Perfect. At least you're making an educated decision. And so that's all we want for you. That's how we want to help and guide you through this process. But I will say it is a lot easier on clients when they're able to do that. Um, so anyways, that is another factor to consider when you're de deciding whether or not to rent or to buy. If you can solve that problem, chances are you're going to be a lot happier buying than tying up some money and wasting a lot of time on a rental. People also ask us, well, why is there such a big gap between the short-term rentals with Airbnb and VRBO and one-year leases? Why isn't there an in-between? And so when it comes to renting houses or condos, the main reason is because put yourself in that investor's shoes. Those investors, they want zero vacancy, which means they want good qualified tenants in there as long as possible. And every time that they have to renew a lease, they not only incur vacancy, but they also have to pay a realtor one month's rent in order to put that property back on the MLS and release it out. And so it doesn't make sense financially for investors to sign leases shorter than 12 months on most occasions. Like I mentioned, if you find a six month lease, that's fine, that's great, but chances are the rent's gonna be jacked up through the roof to accommodate for having to release it out and that vacancy. So you're gonna pay more for a shorter term lease. And so that's the explanation behind why there's such a big gap between signing a 12 month lease and then doing some type of short term rental. Now, the happy medium there on the in-between is possibly finding an apartment, even though that's not ideal for a lot of our clients because they've got large families, but it is an option to find an apartment um, in that meantime, and a lot of times you can get a three to six month lease in an apartment with the option to renew, and that'll give you time to go ahead and get on the home search, get under contract, and go ahead and get closed. So last but not least, I do wanna reiterate, the most common disruption that keeps people from feeling like they can buy here and makes them ask the question as to whether or not they should rent is not feeling comfortable in their purchasing decision. Look, the last thing I want is for you to make a rush decision, buy a home, and then call me in a couple months or a year after you've really gotten to know the area and be like, man, I think I bought in the wrong area. I can confidently say we've yet to have that happen. And the reason is because when you do reach out to us and you do come in for one of these trips, we're gonna listen to exactly what you want and then we're gonna use our knowledge and our skill set to help point you in the right direction. But ultimately, you know, there's no pressure, pressure to make a quick decision. What we typically find, as I mentioned, is in usually two to three days, if you've got more time, great, 
but usually in two to three days, when you tell me, hey, I want you know an acre, well, that weeds out a lot of stuff. Uh, okay, I want 3,000 square feet. Well, that weeds out a lot of stuff. Okay, I want A-rated schools. Okay, that re weeds out a lot of stuff. Just two, three, four, five bits of criteria alone. I wanna be near a lake or I wanna be near a golf course. I want trees. Whatever it is, that's gonna narrow down your search way quicker than you think. And so when you actually come to town combined with you know an hour long conversation with us as far as what you want, um, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with how confident you feel in a purchasing decision of going, this is the right place for me. We have clients that come in and ultimately they say, you know what, this looks great online, it's great in person, but it's, it's not exactly what we're looking for. But nine times out of 10, we're able to help them find the perfect place for them to relocate right here in the Houston area. So if that is you, if you're on the fence, the best thing you can do is reach out in the comments below, fill out that survey, and a member of our team will reach out to you immediately, and we'll start asking you those right questions so that you can ultimately decide whether or not it's best for you to buy or rent right here in Houston, Texas. Thanks so much for watching. Leave comments down below. We'd love to reply to you, and we will see you guys in the next video.